Hey guys, what's up? I'm Morgan and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for joining me. If you find something that you like about my channel, please subscribe and join the fam. I really love all of you new subscribers. I love all of my old subscribers. You guys keep me motivated and you guys keep me going. Um, quick disclaimer before I jump into this video. Um, I know everybody is self-isolating right now and um, quarantined in some places and practicing social distancing. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, you probably have missed my announcement of the direction I'm about to take my channel for the upcoming weeks i'm going to be posting a lot more tutorial based videos tutorials projects things that you can work on but i'm still going to keep my channel very much so about branding about biz business building your brand creating that aesthetics and because i'm a swimwear designer i felt like these are some projects that you guys can do because i know there's a lot of aspiring swimwear designers that are following me people that are starting their brand and you probably want to make your own samples so i'm going to show you guys today how to make a bikini pattern bottom for um, yourself or for someone else using a plain t-shirt. So this is what it looks like. This is what we're gonna be making right here. These are the bikini bottoms and it has the side tie strings for you to obviously tie your bikini. But we're gonna have the front piece, the back piece, and the side ties. Um, these were made from Nike t-shirts that I had just lying around. I wasn't wearing them. So I decided to cut them up and make a bikini bottom uh, so yeah we're gonna learn how to do that and I'm also gonna show you guys how to make the actual pattern so you guys can keep the pattern you guys can keep practicing and these patterns are really good because you can mani manipulate these in the future and create new patterns for yourself that's how I learned this is what I still do to this day but this is a very simple bikini pattern I feel like it's very easy to follow and you're only gonna need paper so yeah let's get into this video so for this tutorial, you're going to need two pieces of paper. It could be plain or lined paper. You're going to need a pencil and a pen to mark up your patterns. You're going to need braided elastic cord. This is a quarter inch cord that I'm going to use for the waistband, a rotary tool and scissors to cut fabric and your pattern. You're also going to need some pins if you are a beginner at sewing, even if you're advanced, pins can be very useful for holding your fabric down. If you hand sew, you're going to need a needle and a spool of thread to work by hand. And you're also going to need some sort of thread, twine, or embroidery string to hold your pattern together once we are finished. And a safety pin to help you pull the draw cord through. A ruler. I like to use the pink ruler is what we like to call it. And you're going to need a t-shirt to use. I'm using a Nike t-shirt size large. You're also going to probably want to have a sewing machine if you don't want to do this by hand. Okay, you guys, so before we start, I do want to show you guys the construction of this so you guys aren't completely lost. This is a seamless bikini bottom, meaning that it does not have seams. Like, you can't see visible seams on this bikini bottom. It does have a cover stitch right here, and you can't see it because I use black thread. This is also navy blue, but you can't see the thread, but it, it does have a cover stitch. So the way that this works is you're gonna have two pieces per pattern. So this will be your pattern that we're gonna, I'm gonna show you guys how to make. This piece, you're gonna be able to cut two. This is the front piece. This will be the back piece. You're also gonna cut two. The reason why you're gonna cut two is because you wanna want, you want them to have the same fabric on both sides so that it's reversible. Um, but also, if this was swimmer fabric, this would also be the same layout. Um, swimmer fabric is different, but this will be the same layout. And also note that your front piece is going to be larger than your back piece. So this piece, as you can see, I don't know how well because it's white. I don't know how well it's picking up on camera. But you see the side difference. This is the back piece. It's smaller than the front. The front piece is wider than the back. The reason is because when you make the bikini, this will be your back piece. See how small it is? Because you want this to have the cheeky butt, like the cheeky butt bottom. And in the front, it's wider because when you put it on, you can have this scrunch up a little and it still ends up smaller than the back piece. So now that we understand that, let's get our supplies and I'm gonna show you guys how to make the pattern first. The first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna be making the front piece first. So instead of using two pieces of paper, you only need one piece for the front and one piece for the back. So you can set the second sheet for the back to the side. Take your first sheet of paper for the front and all you're gonna do is fold it in half. 
just like that and press it. Once you do that, open your paper back up and you should have a crease down the middle. So this is going to be our guide, okay? Now, for to start the pattern, we're gonna go very close to the bottom of your paper. You're gonna take your ruler and find the one inch line and line that up with the center line of this paper. I don't know how clear that is, I'm sorry, but <laughs> line that up with the center of that paper and take a quarter inch up from your ruler. So go up a quarter inch on the paper and line the middle up with the number one. Then you're gonna take your pencil and take a line and go all the way from the number one to the number two. Just like that. One to the number two. So now you should have a line straight across that is two inches wide and a quarter an inch off of the edge of the paper. The, you, the reason why we do a quarter inch off the edge of the paper is because we're gonna use this as our seam allowance for the front piece. So the next thing that you wanna do is again, go back to your paper and extend both sides of this line by a quarter inch. Just like that. So now you have your seam allowance. That's your seam allowance here on both edges and this is your seam allowance here. So the next step that we're gonna do for the measurements is take your ruler and line it up with the edge of the middle. That middle fold, line up your ruler right next to that edge. So from the bottom all the way down to, I mean all the way up to the top along that center fold. And you're gonna take your pencil and mark all the way from the edge of the paper and go all the way up until you get to 11 inches. So 11 inches straight down the middle of the paper. Just like that. So you should have a line all the way from the bottom all the way up to the top for 11 inches. The next thing that you wanna do, you wanna take your ruler, find the four inch mark on your ruler, place the four inch mark on the center line, the center line that we just drew, place it right there to meet the top notch. So where that 11 inch ends is where you want your ruler to start and set on top and you want it to be on the four inch mark. And then you're gonna take your pencil and you're gonna go across horizontally eight inches. So go all the way from this part to here, the eight inch mark. So you should have a T type shape going on right here. So from here, from here to here is eight inches. You can totally mark this on your paper as you go to keep a guide. That's what I do um, every so often when I'm creating new patterns. So you would use, I would use a pin for that. And you just put eight inches. You flip it sideways. You put 11 inches. You put down here was two inches across with a quarter inch allowance. So two inch and quarter inch allowance. The next thing you wanna do is take your paper and where you just drew that eight inches across, you want to take your ruler and place your ruler on one and a quarter inch, meaning one inch plus a quarter. You wanna make sure that quarter line is touching the top of this line. So lay it flat on top at one and a quarter inch, making sure again, you keep that four in the middle, that four inch line in the middle. So I'm gonna line mine up right there. And you wanna take your pencil and draw a line across. So now you should have two lines that are one and a quarter inch apart, okay? One and a quarter inch apart. Next thing you wanna do is take your ruler and on the second line that we just drew, take your ruler, 
set it on top of that line making sure again it's still lined up with the four inch in the middle so you know you're making accurate measurements and on the inside of this you just want to make a notch at a half an inch so that's a half an inch just make the notch just like that a half an inch and you also want to do that on this side on this side of the paper And all I'm doing is writing the inches. That's a half inch notch. This is one and one quarter away from the top line. So I put the arrows pointing up. I put the eight inch line that we did going all the way across and I put the arrows going sideways. For the middle line going all the way down, I put 11 inches and made sure I put all the way up and down with the arrow. And I did the same thing at the bottom. It's two inches. It's gonna equal out to two inches after you finish sewing with the quarter inch seam allowance. So that's what I marked down there. This is just how you keep track of your patterns. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is, again, take your ruler from the bottom now, the bottom where we marked that first line that we did, take all the way to the bottom, go to the edge of your line, your last marking right here, down to the bottom, and you want to line it up and make sure it's straight and even. Take your pencil and measure up to two and a quarter inch and just draw a line all the way down to the bottom just like that two and a quarter inch just like that okay so that should be how your line looks this line is going to be our curve line so this is going to start curving into that top line i'm going to show you how to do that right now so the next thing you want to do is take your ruler let me zoom out. Take your ruler and where we just finished that two and a quarter inch line, the top of that line, and the half inch notch that we did up here at the top part, top part of the paper, take your ruler, match up those two points on your paper. So the quarter inch and the end point for the bottom line that we just did. So from here to here. Somehow use your ruler. It can be diagonal because I'm going to show you how to curve it. But get your ruler and make sure you have a straight line just from here down here. So from that quarter, that half inch notch, I'm sorry, all the way to here. You want to take your pencil and just lightly line this part. So you see how already the bikini is starting to form itself. So you did the half inch notch to right here and you curved it. So again, just write in your measurements that you did so that we always have um, a guide. Okay, so I'm not gonna draw this side of the line because I'm gonna show you why, but this entire thing already has your seam allowances set for you on here. So you don't have to add seam allowances unless you want to make a larger size or a smaller size. So you will grade it outwards for larger and you'll grade it inward for smaller this pattern is for a size large the reason being is because a size large on a t-shirt using this pattern size large on a t-shirt is going to equal out to be a medium if i were to use the same pattern on swimwear fabric this would actually be a size large here's why swimwear fabric you see the stretch in this fabric this will be a size large. It will fit snug on the body, it will fit tight because of the stretch of this fabric. But as you can see, this doesn't, this doesn't do that. This stretches, it has stretch going horizontally and I'm gonna show you on the t-shirt. So it has stretch going like this, but it doesn't have much stretch going upward because t-shirt fabric is usually 100% cotton or you're probably using some jersey material. If you're using a jersey knit, it's gonna equal out to be a large, just like the swimsuit fabric, but this is going to turn out to be a size medium, okay? So just understand that. Now, <laughs> what you wanna do is take your paper, fold it the opposite way so you can see the print, and now you have that center line again, how we're back to that center line. And you wanna cut your pattern out according to these lines. So you wanna cut your pattern from here here and then all the way up and then go out like that 
as you can see on here the lines they don't end at the end of the paper so you don't want to go all the way over there you literally want to stop here and go up so if you it makes it easier for you you can take your ruler and just draw the line across so you know that you are going to cut like this stop here go that way and go up and then go across so that way you know that that's what you're cutting if your paper is moving around and you don't feel comfortable you can always take a piece of tape and just tape it on the sides tape it at the top and tape it right here so you can cut it without the paper moving but um, I'm pretty good at it I'm gonna be using just regular scissors and I'm gonna cut this out So now you can see you have a bikini bottom pattern. This is the front piece of our bikini bottoms. And that's why I folded it in half. It made it life a lot easier than you having to cut like this and it being uneven. You just fold it back in half and you follow the pattern. So now you have a full pattern. So I'm gonna show you guys how to mark up this pattern so you know that it is your bikini front. So the first thing that you wanna do is on this center line, you want to write center front. So put center front, just like that. I don't know if you guys can see it, let's see. Yeah, so you wanna put center front right here and anywhere on the pattern you can write it however you want, whatever is gonna work for you so that you know. Um, and then you're gonna put the size of the pattern. So I always write size and I'll put an L and I'll circle it. So this is a large. Then underneath it, I put the style. I don't know what style you want to name yours. You can name this whatever style you want. It can be racy bikini bottoms. It could be, um, you know, your name type bikini bottom. I'm just going to put, for this example, I'm going to put um, triangle V front bikini and then you want to make sure you make sure you put this as the front piece or the back piece so you see I put front already front and I put bikini right there the other thing you want to make sure that you note on your bikini pattern is your lines your stitch lines so for me I always put stitch lines like that if it's stitched so this is like I said the top stitch right here and I just put draw cord right here so that's going to be where the draw cord goes through the channel where your draw cord is pulled it's going to go through this seam once it is sewn the next thing that you want to write on your um, bikini bottom is how you want to cut this pattern so this is just a front piece so I always put cut one single piece so I circle the one and then I put flat sometimes you have bikini pieces I never cut bikini bottoms on a fold but you can cut it on a fold like this and you'll automatically have your one piece but for t-shirt fabrics you could I, I always use front just one flat you will save time and you won't really lose those measurements so that's how I mark it down okay so now that we have the front piece the back piece I'm going to speed it up just a little bit because I, I didn't want to speed through obviously measurements but for the back piece I'm going to show you a much quicker approach to doing this you want to take your front piece sorry let me, let me fold this again make sure you fold it I'm sorry you don't have to fold it if you feel comfortable tracing this flat but um, if you're not comfortable and you have shaky hands just fold it and save yourself a lot of troubles <laughs> so you want to take this piece you want to match up your pieces flip it upside down so that your folds match so you're not trying to flatten it out as you go so just match up those bottom lines just like that and the only lines that you want to trace at this moment or mark I'm sorry at this moment is you want to take your pencil let me see if I could get closer 
So you already have a flat line. You want to take your ruler and you want to have the exact measurements going across. So you want to have your ruler with four inches in the middle. You just want to go across all the way to eight inches like before. And you want to mark underneath. You can already see. You can't see it on the camera because the paper is white. But you want to trace the side part here. That side, those two side seams. Make sure you're not moving the paper around like I am. <laughs> Mark in half an inch. That's it, and stop. So you wanna put the half inch indent. You wanna put the line to that connects it from the top and the bottom. And then down here, you want to mark the sides where they start. So the sides of both of the patterns, just like that. Then you wanna take this paper and get rid of it because you don't need the front piece anymore. So as you can see, see how it's like the lines that I trace where the top pieces, I just tra traced the top all the way across eight inches. Then I went down uh, an inch and a quarter right here. And then I indent, put the indent of a half an inch right here. And at the bottom, at the bottom of the page, all I did was mark the two notches. So all I did was put lines on the side of this to make it match. The next thing you wanna do is take your ruler. And instead how on our front piece, we went from the bottom to the top two and a quarter inches. What you wanna do from for the back piece is line this up and match that line that you put there. And instead on the back piece, it's different because it's more higher cut on your butt. So you wanna put all the way up from the bottom to the top three and a quarter inches. Just like that. So you should have a three and a quarter inch line going down. And then you wanna take your ruler Again, match those notches, that half inch notch, and the notch where it's at three and a quarter at the bottom of the page. And diagonally just draw that line in, just like that. And this is the higher cut option. You can totally mark in all your markings if you want. It makes sense to do that. I'm just not gonna do it right now. Well, let me do it. So now you have your bikini bottom. So this is the bikini front and this is the bikini back. And as you can see, everything's lined up, everything's even. The only thing is the back goes in. Do you see that? Let me see. See how that line? The back goes in more because this is again gonna be higher up on your butt. So you're gonna mark that. The last markings you wanna do are the same markings you did before and just mark up the back of your um, pattern. Okay, so this is the front piece and this is the back piece. You don't have to write back or front if you don't want to because you will know automatically by center back for the back piece and center front. So that is a way to differentiate the two as well. Another thing that you should write down on, on these patterns are if these patterns are seamless or if you need to cut these on a lining, just put basic instructions on this one. So this one, I can you can see, this will be for cut one flat. That means it's going to be um, made with the lining. So cut one flat, that's for lining. Also, if you put seamless, which is what we're making right now, you would write seamless cut two. So seamless cut two pieces. So now that we have our front and back bikini patterns, you wanna take your t-shirt now, whatever t-shirt that you're gonna use. Again, like I said, I'm using a standard size large with um, a Nike t-shirt. You're gonna take your t-shirt, unfold it and everything. And we're gonna be using mostly the bottom half right now. So you can see if this makes your life easier, you should um, probably iron it. <laughs> just so it uh, doesn't have wrinkles, especially if you're not comfortable with just like cutting and stretching fabric and things like that. So like I said before, do you see how it's stretching? The t-shirt stretches just only a little bit of stretch in both ways, like only a little bit. So we're gonna be taking just smooth out your shirt. 
So now that I've smoothed out the um, t-shirt and I know there's no like lumps and bumps underneath the shirt, making sure everything is really smooth as possible before cutting into this. I'm gonna lay the largest piece, which is our front piece, and I'm going to place it anywhere on the bottom half. And I say anywhere because I'm gonna show you why in a second, but anywhere on this bottom half. And then I'm gonna take, if you have a rotary cutter, take your rotary cutter. If not, you can completely use scissors and you will be fine. Um, but I'm gonna use the rotary cutter. <laughs> you're gonna take this and what you're gonna do is cut off this bottom half of this t-shirt so right under this print if you have a print it doesn't matter just make sure that you cut the bottom half because um yeah just do that <laughs> so take the bottom half see that's why I use a rotary cutter because it just slices it and you're gonna get rid of the top part of the t-shirt for right now And the next thing you wanna do is take your scissors and cut up the sides, cut the sides evenly. Just straight there on that side and straight on this side. So you just take the scissors. And cut. Just like that. And you're gonna do the same thing to this side. So now you have two individual pieces. We're not gonna be using this bottom layer either, but I advise you to match those up as good as you can. And again, cut this thick layer off the t-shirt bottom, the seam, you don't need it. So this little bottom seam of the t-shirt, you don't need that right now. So you can get rid of that. Okay, so this is how you're gonna lay your bikini patterns out. The sides are matching on both these ends and that end. These are probably not matching because you cut the t-shirt like that, but it's okay. If you use a large t-shirt, you should be able to fit this in. If you feel like you're not going to do good with a large t-shirt, just do an extra large and you'll save yourself a lot of heartache. So you just wanna line your patterns up. This is the front piece right here, and this is the back piece. And it's already on two, because remember I said we're cutting two pieces, so it's already layered to cut two. And it's the same fabric, so all you're gonna have to do is flip it in a minute. Um, I suggest you get something that will weight this down. So if you don't have anything to weigh it down, you can find just things around your room or around your house and just weigh it down. You can set a cup on top of here, whatever it is, just set it flat so you don't mess up the measurements and just lay it down. And then what you're gonna do is literally just cut it out. Just follow the lines, cut this pattern out all the way around. And then you're gonna cut this one out again, cut this one out according to the pattern that you made and cut it out. And you're gonna end up with four pieces, two for the top and two for the back. So let me do that right now. Okay, so now you have the two pieces cut on the bikini back. 
making two pieces cut on the bikini front. So I'm going to show you right now. This is one piece and that is the second piece. And to make this easier for you, what you're going to do is take the top layer, which is the outside of the t-shirt, flip it over. And make sure that both of the right sides are touching. So both of the right sides of the t-shirt should be touching. Make sure both of the right sides of the front are touching. And then again, make sure the right sides of the back are touching as well. So the next step is to get your pins. The pins are going to help you keep your pattern in place while you're sewing and um, it'll make your life easier. I don't usually use pins, but I'm going to show you guys how to use them because um, it'll be easier, especially if you're a beginner. So you're just going to take your pins and the parts that you want to pin are the outer sides of the crotch area. So you're going to pin this side. You can use as many pins as you feel comfortable with. Um, just make sure that you don't just sew, sew over them so you don't break your needles, but you're just going to pin it. So it will look something like this and you can pin the other side if you want right now and then you can leave this top part open just for a second because I'm going to sew this part first. Now that I showed you guys how to basically line up your fabrics, this is fabrics right sides together and you're going to put your pins in the crotch lining. So these are the crotch linings right here. Don't sew across. Do not sew this part right now, okay? Don't do that. So you just want to make sure that this side is pinned and this side is pinned if you're not comfortable sewing without pins. If you're a beginner, I advise you to do this. And this is going to be our front piece and I'm going to do the same thing with the back piece, but I'm only going to pin this one for tutorial purposes and time. I'm going to be sewing on my sewing machine. I'm going to be using a regular zigzag stitch. Um, what you don't want to do is use a single straight stitch. Don't do a straight stitch on any bikini if you don't, especially if you're using just a regular sewing machine instead of an overlock machine. I'm not gonna use an overlock machine because I know a lot of people don't have one. So I'm gonna use just a regular sewing machine where everybody will have a zigzag stitch. Another thing is if you are going to do this by hand and you're gonna hand sew, um, I'm just showing red because it shows better on camera, but <laughs> you would use the same color fabric as your bikini. Mine is a dark blue, but I'm just showing it as an example for the red. And you will get a needle that is small that is not going to make big holes in your um, bikinis. And if I was to use this on my fabric, it won't make holes and things like that that's noticeable. Even when you hand sew, I don't suggest you doing a straight stitch. I suggest you doing more of a zigzag zigzag stitch on your fabric as well. I'm not gonna do a tutorial on that right now because that would take forever. But again, don't just do the straight line stitch because what happens when you do the straight line stitch is when you put on the bikini or you put on the fabric, as soon as you pull it more than it wants to be pulled, all those threads are gonna pop. They're all gonna pop because there's no tension and a zigzag stitch it goes like this so it allows the fabric to move with the stitching so yeah <laughs> do, don't do a straight stitch okay one last thing before I start sewing I'm going to show you this up close as I can do you see this corner you see how it goes in and then it goes down to be if you are advanced you could just sew this way and drop the needle and stop it and then continue on if you are a beginner what I suggest that you do is start right there um, a quarter inch seam allowance just start at a quarter inch and then sew it down and then when you're done you take it out and then you just sew across and so you take it out and you sew across until you meet that line because if not your pattern is going to be inaccurate if you're not really good at sewing i'm going to show you what i'm talking about right now okay so this is the fabric um this is the end this is the notch right here and that's the indent right here and this is the crotch line that we put pins in so what you want to do um, is you want to put your fabric under I like to put my fabric under past the corner so that it's easier to sew so long as it's lined up at a quarter inch with your sewing machine I like to put it exactly where I want the needle to drop drop the needle Sew up just a little bit and then back stitch it so that it's super tight. And then go forward again.
then what you want to do after you do that you want to lift up the presser foot turn your fabric so that it's still lined up with that quarter inch so now we have the quarter inch seam allowance going down the side so it's going to be stitched right here and you just want to take your time put the presser foot back down and continue sewing And this is what it's gonna look like afterwards. You see the stitching, it's a quarter inch off the edge and it is perfectly lined up. Even the top, I don't know how well you can see that. But even the top, see how it's stitched and it goes across just to that notch line and then it continues down for the crotch line and it's still a quarter inch all the way around. Now, as you can see, I did not sew the crotch closing. Don't sew this part right now and you'll see why later so what I'm gonna do is flip this on over and do the same thing repeat the steps on this pattern as well as the back pattern and then I'll be right back so the next thing that you want to do with this pattern is now take the top line up the top and again, use pins to secure this, the top part, and you wanna sew across here a quarter inch as well. So now you have the top part sewn as well a quarter inch from the top all the way across so what you should end up with and you can clean up the threads as you go if you want just snip them on off you won't be able to see them once you flip it over but to have a clean look just snip off the hanging thread okay so now that you have your front piece sewn it looks like this the only open parts on the front piece should be the two side openings which is this little opening right here on the side that we did not sew down and this opening right here on the side as well as the crotch opening there should be no stitching here here or here um, you can just set this one to the side and you're going to do the exact same steps for the back piece So I'm just going to come back after the back piece is sewn and I'll pick up from there Okay, so now that that's done, you can see that it's completely closed and you can see the inside piece is still in there. And you're probably wondering how the hell you're gonna get that piece out. So you can definitely pull that out through the side seams, side holes. Remember, that's why I said don't close that. You don't want that closed. This is where the drawstring is going to go through. So you can definitely pull it out through there. If you're having difficulties with that, you can always seam rip a small hole right here and just pull the whole thing out and then you can just um, hand sew a blind stitch to close it back up and you won't ever notice it was a hole there to begin with. I'm just gonna pull mine out through this little bitty hole. If you are using swimwear fabric, it's a lot easier because t-shirt fabric is super thick and non-stretchy, you have to kind of like guide it out very, very slowly. So here we go. See, this is my finger right here, and this is the fabric. So I'm gonna find whatever little edge piece that I can grab and kind of just pull on it, tug on it a little bit until it's straight. There we go. Okay, so I have the piece of fabric right here. You see that? It's sticking out, and I'm just going to 
pull it on out. Literally, see how it's just coming straight through there? Pull it out, and then you're gonna have to adjust this one as you go. Because this one is getting flipped inside out as I'm, as I'm pulling, this one is getting flipped to the right side. So just keep on going. So now you can see that's one side, this is the other, and you just adjust it and you know straighten it out, obviously. Okay, so I want to I want to show you guys this real quick. So you can see how on this side I've actually pulled the little side tabs out, and on this side I left them tucked in. And this is what the finished part is going to look like. It's going to be tucked in so that it's just seamed, seam streamlined, streamlined, nice and neat without these sticking out. This is why you made that um, half inch indent. So that way when you put the drawstring in, these tuck in perfectly invisible. You can't see it and it'll be streamlined. So now the next step, we're almost done guys. The next step is really easy, so I'm going to show you guys this right now. All right, so the next step, what you want to do is you're going to now sew the seam, the closing seam that is going to hold your drawstring. So let me just drop this down. Where the indent is, you see the indent? See how it's just a small circle right there where it starts? You're going to start there. That's where your seam is going to be. And you're going to match it on the same side. See, they're even. That's why we did these measurements very accurately because your next seam is going to be a straight stitch. This can be a straight stitch. A straight stitch from this end all the way to that end. So it's going to be straight all the way across because that's where your drawstring channel is going to go through. So let me sew this up and I'll show you guys what it looks like. Okay, my bad, my camera died, but I'm recording from my phone. But um, this is what we did. So you should have sewn, like I said, from this end to this end, keeping those holes open. They're still open. You don't want that closed because that's where the drawstring goes through. If you follow this pattern down to like a T, then this seam allowance is a half an inch. It's a half inch across and it will meet on both both sides. <laughs> so the same thing for the opposite end, a half an inch seam allowance across the top. So now you have a channel to put your drawstring in and now you have a complete front and back piece bikini and like I showed you I'm gonna show you right now so you guys can know exactly what we're doing and where we're at so remember on oh that's bright remember on the pattern I said that two inch line that we did at first that is the actual crotch length so when you take your ruler and you measure that this is two inches automatically across so like two inches you take your ruler and you measure it and you flatten it out and your bikini's all flat or whatever, you can see that that's the two inch that we measured. So that's an accurate measurement for the pattern that we just created. So now as far as the um, draw cord, you have like three options to be honest. So on this one that we made already, this is just t-shirt scraps. And I cut the t-shirt and this is a one inch piece a full one inch piece. I folded it right sides together and I sold it down and I flipped it inside out and that's why they're so long. I preferably like preferably like longer strings. If you don't wanna do that option, you can still use elastic. You can use elastic to make your channel. If it's the same color, obviously it'd be a little bit better unless you have a, a contrast top. And so if you use elastic, all you would do is measure around where you would want it on your um, waist or how you want it to fit on your body, like the exact tightness and everything. And you just measure it around and you cut it off at that point. And then you put the, you will take the elastic and you'll put it through this side, carry it on through that side, and then you'll sew the ends closed. That is super easy. That's the easiest way. The last option that I would give you is hold on <laughs> the last option that I would give you is if you are the size that could fit the scraps you remember the end pieces that we cut off of the t-shirt you can take these two pieces oops put them right sides together sew across 
only one edge so you would sew across this edge right here and then you would end up with one open piece and then you can put that through as well you can use ribbon you can use cord whatever you want that's what you can use so I'm gonna do it with the elastic and I'm gonna show you guys how that is going to turn out so basically like I said you would take elastic it's hard to measure on camera but <laughs> you would measure your waist where you would want that elastic to fit like the tightness of it oh let me see so mine's I'm gonna measure about right here so I'm gonna measure it for you to let you know exact length. So if you wanna follow mines, you could. Um, I'm typically a size medium and large. So, you know, this may work for you if you're same. I have a smaller waist, but you know, once you do these measurements, you have to do it according to your body. So if you're making it for you, use, you know, your own measurements, but I'll tell you my exact length that I'm cutting mine at, so you'll know. What is that? So I'm cutting mine at 13, 13 and a half inches folded. So 13 and a half inches folded. And by folded, I mean you fold it the elastic and then cut it. So I'm sewing mine just like that. Now, what you wanna do now from here is take one end of this Take the safety pin that we had, that I showed you guys, put the safety pin through one end and close it. Grab the bikini that you just sewed together. You can totally let one side go. You're gonna take it and put it through that hole and just feed it through all the way till you get to the other side. So now that you have it through one side, you're gonna pull that other side up and you're going to continue on without flipping it and stuff, make sure it's straight. Continue on through the back piece or the front piece if you started from the back. So you're gonna continue on, see, like that and just keep feeding it through. It's a little tricky to get through this opening because you know it's folded in but if you stick your finger through as long as you can touch your finger you should be able to guide it out see like that so you pull it through so now that we have it through you want to take the safety pan off match the pieces making sure that it's straight so So you have this little piece, see like that? So you have this. Now you can do two things here. You could sew this piece, just a bunch of zigzag stitches across the top here. I don't like that option, but you can do that if you want, just because if you do it that way, it creates a little bulkiness. So I want mine smooth and laying flat as if it's not there. So what I do is overlap them so you have two pieces and you just put one on top of the other just like that maybe about how long is this that's about one inch i overlap them one inch and what i'm going to do is zigzag stitch back and forth a couple of times to make sure it won't pop or break and then it is finished so let's do that Okay, so that is how you sew the elastic. You can see it's a zigzag stitch going across. And this is what I mean by zigzag stitches. See how it stretches with the fabric? If you were to do a straight stitch and did this, it would just pop apart. Eventually, it would pop apart. And you don't wanna see this part, so make sure you locate the back of your, whoops, 
hold on let me fix this <laughs> locate the back of your swimsuit if you're at this point and you don't know the back here's a good way to tell all you have to do is match them together whichever side goes in whichever side is on the inside that's your back piece because remember we cut the back higher up because it is a cheeky bottom so this is my back piece and what i want to do is pull that zigzag part all the way in there till it's about in the middle this is where you would add your tag and then you could totally secure the tag to, well, you pull it down, secure the tag to um, the zigzag part of the elastic. So that way when you put it on, it never comes out. So it's holding its strength on the inside and you can adjust it like that. So that's how you would get away with that. <laughs> but here is the bottom. See, this is cute little bikini bottom and the reason i use the elastic guys for the waistband hold on let me fix it line it up okay so the reason i use the elastic for the um bottom is because i'm going to be doing a completely different tutorial with the top of this t-shirt and it has white in it and it's going to be creating a bikini top so it can have a matching bottom so let me show you the top so you guys understand so remember the shirt we started with the nike t-shirt so we're going to be using this to contrast so it's the white the white that matches it you could totally leave it like this if you want to be honest and make a cute little crop top and you'll have the bikini bottom so it can be something cute and playful that's another option, you know? Okay guys, so this was a pretty lengthy video, but again, this is a beginner video and I don't like to skip out on steps because you know, I feel like that's unfair to you guys. So I know it's lengthy, but if you made it to this point, thank you so much for rocking with me. Thank you so much for enjoying this this tutorial if you try this out on your own at home if you're you you try to use this pattern please 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 tag me on instagram i would love to see it that would be so cool to see if you actually try this yourself um before i let you guys go i'm going to show you guys how to store your patterns a very easy way very very easy way all you want to do is take your patterns both of the patterns patterns that you just made place them together make sure the crotch lines meet and if you don't have a hole puncher, just find something that will poke a nice hole to fit um, string so that you can um, tie it. So I'm just gonna take my hole punch and I'm gonna put a notch. I'm just gonna slide it until, as far as it can go. I'm gonna put a notch right in the middle. Just like that. So the hole punch is right in the middle of both of those um, pattern pieces. You're gonna take some sort of string. You can take, I'm using a um, just a little twine and you can take it, you can make it as long as you want. I like to make mine just a little bit longer so that way I could um, hang them. So you take the twine and you just put it through just like that. Take the two end pieces and don't tie a knot because you will keep cutting the twine every time you need the pattern. You could totally do this and leave it on here if you tied a knot and just, you know, made patterns out of this. But um, I like to just do that little loopy thing to where it's not a knot. Like that. And so you can hang this over a hanger, you can hang this on the wall, on a hook, and you will have all your pattern pieces laid out okay laid out nice and neat and you can have your bikini bottoms separate from your bikini tops as long as you are constantly making these you will find a way to have your system so you can see i have the other pattern the first pattern and i have the second pattern and now i have two bikini patterns on string hanging ready to be used whenever i want another thing if you are using this this is these patterns that you just made you guys they're a really good way to draft new bikini patterns so it, as an example you can take the is this the bottom yeah you can take the back piece and say you don't want it to be this cheeky you can totally extend it like you can keep the same width or you can start creating waistbands to go all the way around to where it's not open or anything on the sides you can just keep on constantly creating more full coverage more full coverage just make sure you guys are keeping those crotch lines you know 
even you can even extend expand the crotch line so if two inches is way too small then you know after making this pattern if it's too small for you then you can go up to maybe um three inches or three and a half inches so that way you have the coverage and you're not like hanging out because you don't want that so um yeah that would be cool but this is the final design you guys oops I am going to press this with an iron probably, but this is the final design. Literally like a size medium, like I said, that size large will make a size medium for t-shirts. So see how much it stretches. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching my video. Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button to join the fam here on YouTube because we're growing. Hit the like button as well. My mouth is dry. <laughs> hit the like button. <laughs> make sure you guys hit the notification bell because you know, you won't miss out on any of my uploads and go to the comment section let me know how you like this let me know if you're going to try this and i always leave a comment down there for you guys to engage with me on and yeah everything else is in the description box i will see you guys on my next one peace